lot of times people say the blueprint or they say the architect or this or these, you know. Let's just, we're gonna get factual with this part right here. This dude literally is one of the actual pieces of hip hop that created a whole lane and a whole genre and helped expand it further than where it already was. So let's just go ahead and say that first so that we can get that out of the way. Welcome Grandmaster Kaz, what's the get down? You know, once once hip hop started getting celebrated and, and documented, um, people started coming out of the woodwork like, wait a minute, you know, all trying to grab a piece of, of credit for the culture of hip hop. Maybe they, they didn't get talked about enough or credited. Mm -hmm. um, hip hop for us started in the Bronx. And that's the era that was celebrated, that was documented. Anything that happened prior to that led to um, hip hop as we know it. So other things influenced hip hop, like DJing ain't new. There were DJs before hip hop. You know, they played um, out in beaches and in, and in parties and clubs. But they wasn't scratching records, right, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. They were playing disco music and they, it was a whole totally different vibe, mm -hmm. okay? Prior to hip hop, people, they were, it was disco. There were DJs who played music on the radio, in clubs, you know, out, out live, prior to that. But they played the music of the day, whatever was popular, whatever. The, what made it hip hop is that Cool Herc took a certain era of music and certain parts of that music and that became the party. It wasn't that he was a DJ. It wasn't that he has equipment. It wasn't that, that was, wasn't new. But he played for a youthful audience and he played the music that we could call our own. You understand what I'm saying? Right, That's right, the difference right, between right. what we call hip hop and things that were going on prior to that. We weren't influenced by that. Right. We were influenced by Cool Herc. And everybody in hip hop, that's anybody in hip hop, points to Cool Herc. And there's a, there must be a reason for that. Right. Why don't we point to Grandmaster Flowers? Or why don't we point to Pete DJ Jones, mm. who, who inspired Flash to DJ? Why don't we point to them? Because they were a different time period and we weren't directly influenced by them. I mean, with anything, usually the people who start it don't get the fruits of it. You yeah, know first what through I mean? the door, and you get it. shot. I yeah, 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 it was kind of before our time. Mm -hmm. And then by the time it got monetized, there was a whole nother generation of people. And the people that were b behind the monetization didn't want to reach back to the beginning. Oh no, we ain't messing with them. They did. They started this, you know. They, you know, they feel entitled, which you damn right. But they'd rather take the next generation, the kids that just thirsty to just do this and get down and sign them to to deals and stuff. So we're not as the founders or the pioneer of. We're not where we should be, you know. As a as a as a generation. You know what I mean? As a generation, there's like three generations behind us is living lovely. All the true, generations true. behind us off this music is lovely, living lovely and eating. So it that's- should be, It should be a music union. We was talking about- Yeah, that. we was talking about the union and everything. I just think, you know, I feel that we should be, you know, everybody should be good as far as who, who started hip hop. And that's what Swiss Beats was talking about. You no, know, it, and, Beats I mean, that's about. facts though. Um, cr um, creating something where he just give all the pioneers a million dollars or something like that, which is a good, uh, nice idea. It's kind of like reparations, I call it. <laughs> I call it reparations, which we deserve as a people, you know. But and 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 I feel we deserve, you know, as founders of the culture. But that that's up to, you know, the the, the people who generate it. I mean, the, the 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 income and the lifestyle and and all the you know. And uh, all the things that you gain, you know what I mean, mm, from mm. this industry. So I just think if there's one thing that 
you know, I think we're not. It's we're not where we should be. You know what I mean? I'm saying financially and as far as ownership in, in, in the music and in the culture. No, I agree. I agree. So, you know, that's why I think a lot of things uh, have changed where it's more about talent again. And you ain't never stopped writing. So. I think it's starting to come back around. Um, talent, talent, because of uh, the change in the way music is sold and distributed, talent is less of a concern. <laughs> now. And it's just about numbers. It's about, you know, keeping... Uh, 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 likes up and followers up and and manipulating social media so it's a different animal right now so um, pretty much anybody can get out there and pop out and 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 win so it's not it's not even about but how do you feel you know knowing that a lot of times it's not even about the culture I feel it's a distraction to the actual <laughs> culture. When things come along and take you away or, or to lessen the importance of a culture, then it takes away from it. It's not good. It's like, I'll give you an example. Um, the protest <clears throat> um, with the, the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, and, and so many others has been distracted. Mm -hmm by this side this this sideways shit that's going on right okay we're protesting mm -hmm. colin colin knelt for this particular he reason lost his job. okay we see our people killed we're protesting okay now the whole wave and the whole attention of everybody is okay this is what's going on justice for this and then you got these Sideway niggas coming in, giving people bricks and shit at protests yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, people just breaking down buildings. They ain't even part of the protest. You'd be like, "What the fuck is going on?" So now you take away from what the actual message was in the first fucking place. Okay, if we could just look at this as a protest, it's strong. But now when Antifa slips in and this and that and then you start you know blaming other people now you take away from the actual meaning of what it was at actually about and the same for hip-hop same for music when you start letting bullshit get in it distracts you from the actual real music and culture and that's not good that's not right, good for right. the music it's not good for the culture how did you guys actually get together? Because I was always told back then it was a real rough time. Not anybody could just be, a, you know, an MC. Plus, a lot of y'all was real cats in these streets. But what it was well, back then, you had different, different kind of niggas. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, you got, you got athletes. Mm -hmm. You got ball players. You know, cats that play basketball, football, whatever. Then you got drug dealers, mm -hmm. street niggas. You know what I mean? Stick up kids, whatever. And then you got your academic niggas just go to school, you know what I mean? Straight up L7 niggas, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And they 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 barely kind of go together. You know what I mean? Wasn't until hip hop came along, you start seeing all these different kind of niggas on the, on on the microphone. Prior to that, you know what I mean? You did what you did. So when I was coming up, everybody that did music, did music. There were a few exceptions. Whoever tried to be a gangster or a stick-up kid, whatever, that showed quick, and a lot, most of them niggas still locked up. But most of the cats who did music or did hip-hop was mm. here. The drug dealers was here. The regular niggas was here. And everybody else was watching, okay? And it wasn't until later that you start seeing drug dealers being rappers. You start seeing stick up kids being DJs and <laughs> shit that was later on but first they hip hop was corny to them niggas so when niggas start eating off of it then everybody start getting involved so I just wanted to make that you know that difference because right, you're right, like right, well you right. know y'all y'all from here mostly all of you a lot of us niggas wasn't you know niggas was called to banks alright like fuck that nigga where the, where the gang at over there 
Come on, let's go over here, nigga. We ain't, we ain't running out to that shit. Nah, because you hear all the stories about, you know We saying? live right in the midst of it. But right, there right. was if you did what you did, then you didn't, niggas ain't fuck with you like right, that. Right, 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 right. You know what I right, mean? Right. It's, it's different so it a, West Coast it culture. Thing. It's like, nigga, you live on this block, nigga. This is, you know what I'm saying? Can't it wasn't like that so or much. nor deny what you just said. Uh, yeah. you know what I mean? From what I know, yes, from, sir, what, yes, from what yes, I read yes, on here. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So so it definitely was a distinction. And, and it ain't like niggas who did hip hop was pussy or nothing like that. It's just that we wasn't street niggas. We right, was right. music. We would, you know, we played ball. We went home. We wrote rhymes. We played records and shit and yeah. shit like that. That's yeah. what built hip hop. Right, 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 right. I mean, the, the, so. It wasn't until like night nightclubs and shit, disco fever, shit like that, that you saw those different kind of niggas come together. The, the hip hop niggas would come because it's about hip hop. The drug dealers, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they they, do they popping thing. bottles yeah, and yeah, shit yeah. in the club and they, they want to be cool with us. We want to be cool with them because right. they got all the jewelry and the coke and right, shit and right, all the right, bitches right, come in. Right. And, you know what I mean? It was a, it, that's when it started to melt. But, um, the the, the 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 truest niggas to the culture, that's all they did. Yes, sir. That it, like a nigga like me. Right. That's all I did. That's all I did. S school? Fuck school. I'm going to give out some flyers, nigga, to my party. I'm going to sell some of these tapes. Yes, sir. You know, after a while, that's all I did, and all my life. Was it a good point, hustle though? That's all I did. Was it a good hustle when you were selling them? Oh hell yeah, and hell yeah! I helped spread hip hop, nigga. <laughs> If you had a, 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 a Casanova fly tape, which was my first tapes I used to make, and I didn't, it wasn't mixtape game like you know it. Yeah, oh, all right. It was like, you want a tape? Come over to my house. I sit your ass right there on the couch. My turntable was right over here. I'm like, what's your name? What, what block you live on? What's your girl name? Yeah, a little shit like that. Boom, sit there. Cut, cut up fucking break beats and shit. Yo, my man, so and so, this and that, from such and such and such a street, this and that, this was for you. $20. That's <laughs> sounded like a cool hustle right there. All right. Yeah, but that was one tape. Look how the shit got later. That's one tape. You talking about I could have took that one tape right. and made a thousand of them shit. But that's, a, that's black entrepreneurship. It grew. It eventually grew to that oh, because you, after a while, I started getting tape decks yeah. and 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 double tape decks. Oh, it was and, going down. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, wait, right. hold up, man. And too many niggas want these shits. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna yeah, take yeah. me too long and just every day, one by one by one. So yeah, and then uh, like you talked about the cold crush earlier, when uh, I got down with them, we had this dude named Tape Master. Mm -hmm. Tape Master used to record all our parties. Mm -hmm. Whoever, were you, whoever were you played, separate from from Cold Crush or something before you got with him, or, or, oh, or, yeah. you, or you found him? So what was you doing before you got with him? Just making tapes? No, I was casting over fly. I had my <laughs> own crew. <laughs> All right. See, All my right. history, my history don't start with the Cold Crush. Let them know. All right. I was a DJ. Let's get to it first. Yes, okay. Sir. Let's get to it. All right. I mean, it. when I was a kid in school, you know, I used to write, I used to do graffiti because my pen game is crazy. If you saw the art of rap, you know what I mean, you see me write a rhyme, you know what I mean, right on, on screen. And the producer of the movie, he was like, yo, your handwriting is, is crazy. You know, this shit is like, your penmanship is, is ridiculous. I was like, thanks. Ice T was like, "Yo, you should see this nigga's rhyme books. <laughs> All this nigga, the rhyme books, whole rhyme books is in perfect penmanship." I, he was like, yo, let me check him out. I pulled out a couple of my books. He was like, oh, shit. This shit is crazy. Mm -hmm. He said, you should do a book. You should. Which I you did. did. I know. That's <laughs> it's called written. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get to it. You know what I mean? The lyrics of Grandmaster Cast. So it's basically just some pages out of my rhyme books. Mm -hmm. And they took photocopies of mm -hmm. and put the book together. All right, all right, all right. Where can they find it at? Though? Oh, um, you can find it from me. Um, all right, go ahead. Drop all that, man. Let's get to it. Drop the merch. Uh, well, that. well, well first of all, my girl Wahida Clark, um, who is, uh, she's known as the queen of hip hop literature and street literature. She, uh, queen of street literature. Um, she republished my book. It was originally published in the, in the, in the UK. And uh, Amazon stopped distributing it. So she republished it. So now I have an audio dope. version. 
That's dope. of it, which you can get on Amazon, Audible Books. That's dope. You know what I mean? Like that. But I still got boxes of the original ones, <laughs> you know, that I got back from Amazon. So I just been slinging them shits, man. You know what I mean? I do a hip hop sightseeing tour in New York. It's called Hush. Hush Tours. I've been doing that for 18 years. Where? 18 years. What does it consist of? It's a, it's a bus. We got a bus. Mm -hmm. like You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A 30 passenger bus. And we, oh, kind of like how we do out here in Hollywood where you drive around. Exactly. Stars, but, exactly. Right, but right. we like a novelty tour. We ain't the big red buses that right. go around the city. <laughs> you know, we are specific. We are hip hop sightseeing tour. Yeah. And uh, this girl named Deborah Harris, mm -hmm. you know, came to me in 2002. Mm. And was like, yo, I want to create this tour, you know, for hip hop. I want to bring people to bring people to the Bronx instead right, of right, coming right, to New York right. from all over the world and just staying in Manhattan. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they need to know where hip hop came from. So I was down with I was down with the concept. At first, it was me, Cool Herc. It was Red Alert. It was Raheem from the Furious Five. It was Reggie Red from the Crash Crew. But I'm the one who, who who stuck with the concept, you know, because it was slow at first. And after a while, you know, Herc was like, yo, man, fuck that shit. Huh? <laughs> and, this, and this one dropped off, but I stuck with the concept and I helped to build it. Right. So I've been like the lead uh, guy for 18 years. Wow. I mean, we bring people from all around the world to, the, to Harlem and to the Bronx and show them where hip hop started. That's dope. Show them different murals and different landmarks in New York, and right. we got a TV on the bus, so we got videos and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got the music pumping. Oh yeah, I know you got the merch right in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got B boys, you know, that come out. So I missed the shit out of that because of this COVID bullshit. Yeah, everything shut down. So you know, tourism shut down first. Right, right. When they stop letting people come over here, and the last thing you want to do if there's a, a a so-called pandemic is to put 30 people on a bus together right. and these people from all over the world right. these are tourists they come in and they, they want to take the hip hop tour so we got people from kids to fucking grandparents yes sir <laughs> alright alright so that dope. That, down, sound, so. that sound like real dope yeah it is but dig how did y'all connect though Cause you was doing your thing. Wait, first off, talk about your DJ. Oh, I'm sorry, talk I kind of got off. Yes, I kind of got yes, off. Sir. See, so I was a I was a b boy. I used to I used to dance at parties, right? And Cool Herc used to play. Used to live up the block, down mm -hmm. the block from me. I lived like one block up from Cool Herc. So when he did that first party in '73, no, I wasn't there. I was a kid, but <laughs> my older, you know, my older uh, cousins and shit. You know, used to go, so I knew what was going on. But I was just dancing. But when I actually saw it, when I actually saw him playing music and, and the way everybody was reacting to it and how he could change a record and it changed the whole crowd mood, I was like, oh shit, fuck that. Fuck dancing. I don't want to be just one of the people in here dancing. I want to be that one person mm -hmm. that make everybody dance. So that's when I caught the DJ bug. So I set my mind on becoming a DJ. You know, I just, I already had records. You know, I mean, every time somebody in my family a move or something, like, you know, they'd be like, yo, what are we gonna do with these records? Give them the, give them the Curtis, he, you know what I mean? He loved records. So I had me a little collection. And when I finally convinced my mom that I might could make a couple of dollars from DJing, mm -hmm. she, 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 she bought me my first set. So I became, I took my b-boy name, which was Casanova Fly, became DJ Casanova Fly. Wait a minute, get them. You can't just skip over the b-boy and then just. Well, you know. the b-boy thing was was a was a hobby. It was like the niggas in my neighborhood had a crew called the Casanova Crew, mm -hmm. and the the fly shit about it was all of them was named Casanova something. Like it was Casanova Mac, it was Casanova Brown, it was Casanova this. Casting over that, and I always, you know, consider myself a casting over oh, anyway. So I'm like, yo, this shit right up my alley. That's right. So I chose the name Casting Over Fly, and I, I was, you know, we da I danced with them, and then uh, started my Could own. Could you get down though? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was, I was nice. What, what were you better at? Groundwork or standing up? Oh, top rock, top right. rock, and all then right, I, I right. do a few moves going down, all but right. basically. Uh, 
the, the, the smaller, lighter niggas really was getting it in. So mm -hmm. when I started concentrating on DJing, I had a crew of B-boys that would dance for me. And they was the my Casanova crew. Right. So that's... But Grandmaster Flash... Now I'm a DJ, uh -huh. right? Yes, sir. I'm competing with other hip-hop DJs. Grandmaster Flash had a, a security crew. The cats that, that was a security for, for Flash were called the Casanovas. And like I said, they was the B-boys. These niggas was thugs. They was gangsters. Yeah, I mean, they was the niggas you, you know, you were scared of. So, the rumor starts going around that like, yo, the, the, cat, the real Casanovas is looking for you, man. <laughs> shit like that. You know what I mean? And, um, I, I, I saw I saw the leader, the head of the Casanovas, at a party, a cool hurt party, and I was like, "Yo, Tiny, what's up?" I said, "I said, yo, I'm Casanova Fly." Man, sorry, I said, "Yo, I'm Casanova Fly," uh -huh. and you know, I've, I've been hearing things, you know what I mean, about this and this and that. I said, "Yo, I'm a DJ." Yeah, I mean, I got my name from from B Boys. I don't, you know, I don't rock with y'all like y'all. And he was like, "Yo, I know that. I get that." He said, "I said, but the, but people in the street like." They don't know that. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and and you don't you don't do what we do. Mm -hmm. So somebody might think that you that oh, you associated that with group. us. Right, right, right. So you might want to do something about that name. Just switch it up a little bit. That's all. That's all he he said. Now I've heard niggas try to speculate that niggas you know put put me under pressure <laughs> to change my name and all that. But I talked to the head of these niggas, and he was like, "Yo, nah, niggas just might confuse you to right. being down with us, right. and something might happen." You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. If you if you don't rock like that, you ain't gonna see it coming. Mm -hmm. So you might wanna change that name. So that's where Kaz comes in. I shortened my name from Casanova yes, to Kaz. Yes, sir. All right. So that's important. I got for you to know. So as a DJ, yeah, I went from Casanova Fly. My first partner was Disco Wiz, mm -hmm. all right, who was half Puerto Rican, half Cuban, and my best friend. And that's that started my journey, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Wiz got knocked after a couple of years. I put other niggas down with me. I needed equipment. So if a nigga had a couple of speakers, come on, man, get down with me. I mean, Mighty Mike, then I got Whip a Whip, Down to Rock, JDL, you know, all these MCs. It went from crew to crew to crew. Till 79, when the thing with Big Bang Hang happened. All right. We'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, because I am it's. It, I got questions about well, that. Well, that was the end of all those different crews that I that I had as uh, a DJ. All right. Um, and then me and JDL was the only ones left. So mm -hmm. JDL was like, let's don't start no another crew, man. I, I, I can't take it. Just, just me and you rock out. All right. So 79, 80, it was the Notorious 2. Mm -hmm. Grandmaster Kaz and JDL. Hmm. Boom. Then uh, Chase invited us to be down with the Cold Crush. Because hmm. we wasn't attached to no crew no more. Niggas was just hiring us to go, you know, and rock out at parties so we could go anywhere we want. Chase was like, yo, you should get down with me, man, mm -hmm. and, and make, this, make us a crew that could compete with you know, the Furious Five and the Funky Four. I'm used to having my own shit, so I don't really want to get down or commit to nobody, but eventually I was like, you know what? Fuck it, that might be the move. I don't have to concentrate on having equipment no more, right, moving right, this right. shit all around, right. speakers blowing and all that. Y'all had, had the real big stuff. Systems, yeah, well, my yeah. set was never really, you know, set you right. know like that i always had a glitch or, or some shit like that so having equipment was a fucking headache to me because mm -hmm. i wasn't like them cats in queens and 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 the guys who preceded hip-hop who had these large massive sound systems we we from the bronx nigga we stole our horns out the train station <laughs> that's how we put our sets together and so I'm like, all right, fuck all that set shit. I'm gonna get down. You with gonna you. have to tell that story on how you go ahead, you get it out. You did what I'm saying. Nah, I ain't telling you that. You gonna have to show it so that they know what it is. But um, so. yeah, so I, I got down with Chase, and that's how the Cold Crush came together. Um, Easy AD, who went to school with Tony Tone, was the first MC. Um, Whip a Whip and Dada Rock, who were from my original crew, was down, had left, and was down with Chase for a while before they left and went to the Fantastic Five. So that left a void in the crew. Right. I got down with Chase, they added KG, 
and me and JDL, and that's the cold crush that the world knows. And we came out, got together in the end of 80, stayed in the lab all year till 81. And then when we came out in 81, we just start ripping shit. Dig that. The first, like, kind of, like, superstar was a solo cat, and that was Busy B. Ah. See, Busy B was the party rocker. Right. So, he wasn't the dopest lyrical dude. He wasn't, but if you went to a party, you went to hear Busy B. You wanted Busy B to set that thing off. Right, right. You know what I mean? And he had that 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 clout and that stature back then. Um, everybody else was in groups. Melly Mel was with the Furious Five. You right. know what I mean? Rodney C. All the Raheem was with the early first Funky Four. And all the marquee MCs that you see later were part of groups. So the competition was between groups mm -hmm. and crews. Right. You know what I mean? So that sparked. A lot of creativity because if they doing this over here it's like okay we're gonna do that but we're gonna do that shit to the fifth power mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying and that was our you can you, you can you can see it you mm -hmm. can see it when we perform yeah yeah you know yeah. what I mean we're one of those groups that you can just see what we put into it when you see us perform mm -hmm. and that kind of after a while raised us up you know what I mean yeah. until after a while it was all it was us yeah it was, you know, it's us, yeah. <laughs> the Cold Crush. Uh, we were never able to take that to the record, to you know what I mean? Right, right. Industry, we were never able to translate that energy and that shit to records. Bullshit label. Mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have no direction, no, you know. These cats later on had a whole company to mentor them and, and this and that, all right, this and that. You're going in this studio and we're going to do this and that. Then so-and-so is going to take you to wardrobe and this and that. Then you got these, you know, all that shit is all set up. We ain't have none of that shit. Damn. We ain't have no, we ain't have nobody say, yo, you know what? If you if you did this and that and saved you this and that, you could do this and that. And later on, it, you'll own it. And nobody, we, none of that. Mm -hmm. We ain't have none of that shit. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so that's why a lot of cats don't don't have nothing from that era, cause it wasn't nobody to tell us. I mean, there, there was no business to know yet. I mean, it's cool to be recognized and all that. You know what I mean, yo? If that dude, and whenever people see you, they gonna give it up, cause right. they have to. Right, right, right. Have to. You you can't you can't deny. But it's what you do when I'm not around, you know what I mean? It's what you say when I'm not around, it's what you think of me or whatever when I'm not around. And if you don't think of me when I'm not around, then I'm not in your conversation. Right. So it, it, I know I've influenced Jay-Z, you know, down the line I've influenced everybody, if not directly, then through somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, I feel fucking great about that. That goes back to one of the first questions you asked me, how do you feel about you right, know, your right. impact? And yeah, you know I mean, that, that really, keeps me going. Mm -hmm. and whenever I see a tribute or a post and Big Daddy give it up all the time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I've heard Jay-Z doing interviews, Will Smith give it up, DMX gives it up, Rakim gives it up. When I see that, I'm not, I must have did something fucking right. You know, everybody I said mm -hmm. is, is somebody you can respect in hip hop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's like a chain and it all leads back to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 77. I wrote the rhymes that you hear in Rapper's Delight. And you could tell by the style of of rap. It was that early you know what I mean? Right. It was like that. But they had gotten popular and I had been saying them for a couple of years. Um when I met Hank, Hank was a doorman and Big Bang Hank, when I met Hank, he was a doorman Rest in peace. at a hip hop club in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And when I used to go to the club and I wasn't performing, me and Hank got cool. So this is around the time of that sound system time when everybody got a big sound system and my <laughs> shit is trash. Uh, uh. So I was like, Hank, why don't you help manage my group? You know what I mean? Put some money into us, you know what I mean? We could rock with these niggas out here. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I bet. So he took out a loan from his mom's and his, and his pops, like two stacks. We got a big, we got big ass speakers built. We bought amplifiers and shit. Like we ready to fuck with Cool Herc and anybody else. Um, 
So in order to pay the loan back, he got a job in a pizza shop in New Jersey, and that's where Sylvia Robinson and them discovered it because they was looking for rappers. They heard Love Bug Starsky, you know what I mean? And they and she was wanting to make a record out of that shit. So she looked around the local neighborhood where she was in Jersey, mm -hmm. got Master G, Wonder Mike, and Hank was working in a pizza shop. He used to take a boom box to work with him with my tapes in him. With them cassette tapes I told you yeah, I used yeah, to yeah, make. Yeah, yeah. So he take the tapes to work with him. He making pizza, whatever the fuck. People coming in and out of the pizza shop like, oh shit, that fat dude could, 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 could rap. Oh, he could MC, cause he's you know rapping right, along right, with right. the box. Right, right. That's that brings Sylvia and them over there. So they asked him, yo, come outside and and, and and rap on his beat, audition. You know what I mean? We try to put a, a record together. Instead of him telling them, nah, 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 I don't rap, I don't, I don't rap, but I manage. Right. Casanova Fly. Right. He ain't say none of that shit. He just went out to the car, repeated all the stuff that's on the tape. Right. They loved it. They was like, you in, you good. And they made him part of the Sugar Hill band. That's how Rappers Delight came about. Let me ask you this though, in retrospect, if he had went and said, hey Kaz, pick up what I'm putting down. They want you to be part of this crew. What would you have did? I'd have been part of the Sugar Hill gang. Yeah, but you bar though. I had, I, yeah. Oh, oh, the Sugar Hill Gang would have been the shit. <laughs> nigga, I'd have got down with him. Yeah. Nigga, nigga, it wouldn't have been no, yo, jump on it, jump on it. It wouldn't have been none of that shit, my nigga. Let, let's get it clear. The same thing I did with the Cold Crush. That's what I would have did with the Sugar Hill Gang. Yes, sir. I shaped it. I, I got shaped you. the Cold Crush. I molded the Cold Crush. I, it's, 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 it's my interpretation of each one of them. It's what they would do if they was me. So if, if, if I had a got down with the Sugar Hill Gang, if Hank would've came to me and said, yo, man, I was in a pizza shop today. This lady came by and shit. She was playing a beat and this and that. I was saying your stuff for her. She dig that shit and she wanted me to get on the record. I'm like, yo, nah, this is, this is my man. Now you my manager. That's what you were supposed to do, nigga. You was you the manager. That's what you supposed to do. Right we would have still been eating right now. Yeah, indeed. Both of us. But you did the bullshit and you went another way. And yeah, you toured, you did that, you lived life, but you you didn't really eat the way you were supposed to. You got fucked over and at the end, the smart niggas left early and you was the last one there. And may he rest in peace. Now you gone, they ain't got shit to show for it. They had fake niggas acting like they was you when you was, yeah, I mean, so, that's not, what kind of legacy is that? So right. would that had have been me? Hell no. Hell no, the Sugar Hill Gang nigga, trust me, I would have took that shit to a height because I would have had the tools to do it. I would have had a studio I could go in and stay in all day, all night. You know what I mean? Without having to worry about paying the shit or nothing. I had somebody in the music industry that's already connected. Sylvia Robinson. I would have took that shit to the fucking fifth power. But once they signed Hank, then they went after the Furious Five. You know what I mean? And this one, the Funky Four. And then they start building up. It was like, okay. We not. I'm not trying to get down with that. We're not trying to get down with that. We're not trying to be where everybody's at. They did that shit on Enjoy Records first. Mm -hmm. Flash and the Furious Five, and the Funky Four, and then the Treacherous Three, and then the Fearless Four, and then the Disco Four, and then the Jekyll and Hyde, and then the, we not, I'm not far, I'm not getting behind all that shit. And now in retrospect, we shoulda. We shoulda, we woulda carved our own niche out of all that shit. I don't care who the fuck is on this label, nigga. Watch when we go in. But we was on some anti-make a record shit. The first, so the, so we didn't run down and enjoy. Yeah, Were I mean, you the first like independent? We like, all, everything mindset? was independent. I got you. I in, our mindset wasn't independent. It was, it was ignorant, <laughs> all right, to be all honest right. with you. Our mindset was, we don't wanna do what everybody's doing. Whereas that's the next way to do shit. 
you know, people out, you fight change and you fight, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, nah, we wasn't in B Street because we didn't want to audition. Did they ask you? You got damn right. It was like, what? I don't give a fuck who you is. You don't know shit about this. How you gonna tell me to audition to be me? How you gonna tell me to audition for something that I made up, motherfucker? Mm -hmm. So, once and once industry got involved, man, people started, you know, it started being a different agenda, a different, you know, set of rules and shit. And, and it started, it all started with the, with the Sugar Hill shit. You know, which commercialized the whole industry. You know, you know during the during the early to mid um, '80s, after you could see our era was over, was 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 slowly coming to it to an end. The era of just being the dopest group out live, because we was the baddest fucking um, hip hop crew out live. Nobody could fuck with our with our show, fuck with us live, and we was good with that. But the tide was changing, you know what I mean? And you had to have a record. Now, we lasted for a while because groups like New Edition was opening up for us. Mm. Run DMC was opening up for us <laughs> for a while. But you could see little by little the tide start changing. And after a while, you, you, were, you couldn't survive without a record. Could eat without a record. You couldn't tour, you couldn't, you couldn't get booked without a record. I think we were the last group that that could rock without a record. And then, like I said, after the Run DMC era, the Def Jam era started, all that shit, it was like, that shit is obsolete. Y'all niggas is done. Hmm. So that's when, yeah, I, I, I lost the, the fire and this and that because there wasn't nothing to burn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and somebody uh, flew a big fucking helicopter over New York and dropped cracked all over it. Yeah. yeah that and that was a 10 year distraction. All right. You know what I mean? And you, you, you watching, you can't get booked, you can't get, you know, it's like you over with. And you seeing other niggas just eating, you know, fucking driving Rolls Royces, getting 800,000 and million dollar, you know, budgets and shit like that. And shooting videos and shit. Video? A tour bus? Y'all niggas is getting on tour buses? <laughs> Nigga, we was catching cabs and shit to gigs, and, you know what I mean, and riding in vans and shit like that. So, yeah, it was real fucking disheartening to see that era come to a close. So, did the fire go, go out of what you motherfucking right? Um, but, like I said, I had a little 10 year, you know, downtime, you mm -hmm. know, with the bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And when I started to get my life back together, hip hop is the first thing, you know what I mean, I went to. Mm -hmm. And luckily, around that time, people started to want to document hip hop right. by then. Right. The That's when all of these early documentaries started, mm -hmm. you know, and they started fishing for the true stories of somebody that was from that era. And not everybody made it. T you know, or was able to articulately speak about the era or do that. Luckily, I made it through the through the clouds. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was one of the people that was able, and I made myself readily available to anybody that wanted to know the story. That was my mission. You don't know about hip hop? Let me tell you the, the real shit. Let me tell you. You want to know the real shit? All right, I'm gonna tell you the real shit. And that's where that mission started. So little by little, I started popping up in documentaries here and there, this and that. And you know, you start getting your life back. Start, I got my turntables again, you know what I mean? I started collecting records again. You know, people start seeing you got your swag back, you know what I mean? They got weight on them again, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, you know? Uh, and so, <laughs> you know, and then, and then the music, and then I started writing again. And it was like, you know what? I never stopped writing though. I used to write in crack houses. Dig that. I used to write fuck crack. I run out of crack, I'd be like, Hey, they gonna get mad at me for fuck asking. Fuck it, I'll pull my book them. out, nigga. <laughs> yeah, until the next lick come through. You know what I mean? Let me tell you, I was so sick with it. Cause I used to sell the shit too. Mm -hmm. And all the niggas running, standing around me, fiending and acting all bad. I'm like, yo, chill the fuck out, man. What the fuck is wrong with all y'all, man? Fuck y'all off of this shit? Mm -hmm. 
and say a fucking rhyme right there. I mean, fire shit right there. Now, I said, if I can do that, y'all could calm the fuck down, okay? That, that's how that's how I, I, I was on it like that. So I spit fire regardless, my nigga. I was at Wayside writing rhymes, all right? The big homies was like, yeah, I ain't New York. Say some of that shit, nigga. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to tell you, man, I was writing, I was writing shit for and sending it to niggas. Yeah, you know I mean, yo, check this shit out. Word, word. I got pads. I got fucking them yellow fucking pads from Wayside, nigga. Rhymes that I was writing. Man. I never. That's that's who I am. If I don't do that, I'm, who the fuck am I? I'm just a regular nigga. You know what I mean, if I don't exercise my my what make me God, then I'm not God no more. Yeah, I, I, I never I never give that up. And when I hear nigga, I always put niggas in ciphers back in the day. Raz, you you already know we done got together. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's always yo let's yo spit some shit, drop some shit. It could be two niggas, four, five, seven. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Always been like that because you can't tell me. Well, nah, man, I don't even remember. Or, yo, I don't. I mean, get the fuck out of here. Because if you ever had it, you always have it. Yes, sir. If you right. ever really had it, if you really got it, you always got it. You never lose it. I don't give a fuck how slow the, slow the beat is or how fast it is or whatever the fuck the mic fucked up or whatever. There's no excuse if you got it. You always got it. And it's always going to show. What happened was I started getting love from different people. You know, that helped me get back on my feet. You know, Biz Markey used to come to shelter and come get me in That's an dope. 850, in a red 850. That's dope. Hey, yo, Kev, you have to... Niggas climbing up over the mother. Yo, who the fuck is that Biz Markey? Yeah, man, I'm out, nigga. <laughs> Don't go in my locker, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bambada sent me to LA in 89. He was like, yo, Africa Islam is out there producing for Ice-T. He got a crib out there. There's niggas from the Bronx out there. We got Zulu Nation, West Coast. Yo, bring guys out there. Yes, Came man. out there, got my shit right. That's when I started seeing Raz and all these niggas. Easy. All these niggas used to come to the club that I played in. What was the name of the club? United Nations. Yes, sir. All right? And Water the Bush. I came out here in 82 and played at the radio. Word? With Ice-T. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then I came back and did the radio again. And I started staying with the nigga who owned it. Wow. And then got root, I got roots out here, nigga. I got fit. This is the only other place I ever had an address. Yeah. <laughs> L.A. Hey, that's good. Now, that's love nigga, right there. When the riot started, yes, I, 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 I just had got home. Two yeah. days. Yeah. Two days. I heard the verdict when I was on my way out. I got home by the time I got up, up in LA, up in Hollywood, nigga, they stopped burning shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> and looting, I was like, my shorty was like, nigga, you just got home. You go out there, nigga, you stay out there. I was like, fuck that. And I went back home. I mean. What you was going to go get, OG? I met Rodney King, you know what I mean, before he passed away, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, some of my best fucking memories in life have been out here, man, That's in beautiful. L.A. So a nigga can't tell me nothing about no East Coast, West Coast, Southern. When all that shit popped up, I'm like, y'all fucking up the game now, man. Y'all fucking up the game. I ain't never had a problem. Never had a fucking problem. And I done been out there read it out, nigga. One day I was... <laughs> yo, one day, yo... You know me and Whip and Whip. You know, I'm from East Coast and I'm an Aries, nigga. That's my color. Yes, sir. I ain't thinking about all that. I'm at it out. So we go somewhere on, on, on Hollywood or something, some spot. And I walk in, we walk in the spot. And niggas is like, <laughs> niggas is moving away and shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck? I see Dub C, cause I know Dub C. Dub C like, yo, what up, what up, cuz? <laughs> he said, I was like, what up, dog? He said, yo, I can't fuck with y'all right now. Y'all flaming too hard, nigga. <laughs> I was like, what's up? 
nigga, nigga can't pull our coat. Like, yo, my nigga, this and this and that, such and such. You know, we would ice tea, so, and, and probably niggas knew. For, but when Booyah Tribe seen us, they was like, yo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Them niggas opened arms for us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, my nigga Randy Cold Mack Randy told me Randy too, like, yo, yo, cuz, you can't be, you can't be walking around Randy. <laughs> I ain't know none of that. You think because you from New York, is that all I got to do is say I'm from New York, nah. nigga. You might get a pass, nigga. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. might get a pass. Nah, that ain't going. And that was back in the day, nigga. Yes, These sir. young niggas, like, yes, from sir. New York, nigga, what you got, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> hey, say, say it one more time. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> you played me too hard, good. <laughs> say it one more time. Yo, what up, dog? I hate. He's like, I can't fuck with you, Kurt. <laughs> Flaming too hard. You too hard. You too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I fuck with Aladdin, man. Yo. I fuck with DJ Aladdin, man. Yo. I used to live, me and Whip lived in the same building. Mugs used to live next door to us. That's crazy. Mugs from Yo. Cypress Hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Special yeah. K for the Church of Street used to live with us. Yeah. Motherfucking um, Coolio. Me, me and Coolio almost got into it one motherfucker day, but that's a cool little motherfucker. I love Coolio to death. I, something, something happened or something, and he, I, he, he was screaming on my man, whip a whip. And I was like, yo, what's good? What's going on? And this and that. He was like, nah, fuck that. This and this and that. Compton. And I was like, ain't nobody said shit about Compton. He was like, yo, you ain't going to be dissing Compton, nigga. I said, I ain't say shit about Compton. Get the Man, don't start that shit, man. Don't start none of that shit, man. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. But I, I, I know how niggas give it up. Like, I guess that's the trigger. Like, hey, don't disrespect my hood, cuz. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm in your hood, nigga. I'm, I'm not shit. I'm, I'm visiting. Oh, yeah, baby. Yourself. And we in Hollywood. We in Hollywood, so I'm like, I should be all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Oh, this is where all the I learned to love and appreciate the fucking the culture and niggas out here, because niggas who don't know got a different picture. Like right. LA. I had a different picture until I actually lived out here. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Tend to judge people that you don't understand, that you don't know. Gang culture to us was like, these niggas is stupid. Fuck these niggas out here that once you come out here you respect and you talk, I'm, well, you're going to respect it because you have to. But once you understand, that's a different respect. You know what I mean? You will respect and shut the fuck up and you don't wear that color because you know what will happen to you. But if you talk to niggas and if you learn, you know what I mean, you understand, okay, this, you grow, niggas grow into this shit, man. Ain't like everybody was like, yeah, I'm gonna be, a, you know what I mean? It's, it's part of the culture. How deep you go with the shit is up to you and how long you stay in it is up to you. But I, I learned to understand and not just judge the shit, you know what I mean? And now, look at, look at New York. Look at all these young niggas in New York. Yeah. I'm everywhere. Well, you know, the thing about it is everybody get these palm trees, you know, twisted and then get out here and then don't understand what's really going on till they get their noodle now. What it is is most people from, from East or wherever they come from, they come out here for the entertainment. They come out here for Hollywood. They come out here to, to make it. <coughs> I don't know nobody that's like, damn, I want to move to Crenshaw. Right, 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 right. Or oh, I want to move down to, you know what I mean? Right. But, but they, Watts but, or Great but Street. They wanna do, you know what I mean? But, but they, I want to move down to Hoover. Do drive -bys, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, you Nigga, I don't know nobody, you know what I mean? So when people think LA, you like you said, they thinking palm trees and yep, shit like yep, that. If yep. you stay up here, you 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 might be alright. But if you if you LA nigga, LA is bigger than Hollywood. Indeed right? it is. That's Way bigger right. than fucking Indeed Hollywood. Indeed it is. But see they one of the things, how, how you feel like this? They like to do little drive-bys and stuff like that and come take pictures by murals and Oh, I was on Slauson and whoop, 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 and they got a whole script story, and then after that, they in traffic somewhere else back up here. Is yeah, well, I mean, part of that is, a, is <laughs> niggas know to take your picture and keep it moving, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That part. <laughs> that, that, 
for the most part, nigga. Bronx, nigga, it don't matter where you at. You gotta respect the law of the land. And wherever you at, yeah. exactly. And, yeah. and and the less you know, then the the less likely, <laughs> you know, you gonna linger. Because mm-hmm. them little hard headed niggas like like your man and them, they're gonna pop up like, yeah, yeah, I'm here, nigga. Alright, <laughs> 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 we out. <laughs> you know what I said? Yeah. But dig. So once you got back on, you know what I mean, to getting the respect that you, you know, was deserved rightfully. When did you get to where like, yo, I'm putting joints out. I'm just, I'm, I'm back at it. I'm well, on it. Like what happened? Um, like I said, Biz helped me out. Dougie Fresh is another person who, like, I don't care. Shout you fucked up. Man, what's dude. wrong? With whatever, nigga, come to my house. Come, I got you. You know what I mean? This and that. Woo, woo, such, such. So, you know, I start going on the road with him. You know what I mean? And different artists, you know, start fuck with me. My main man, Parker Lee in Chicago. Parker is the cat who took me in the studio. Right. He like, yo, he started trying to fuck with my, my man, KG. And, you know, they did a joint or two, but he see how much shit I got. Right. I'm like, yo, you, you nigga, you want to go in the studio, nigga. I got shit. And after that, we just rock. So we did joint after joint after joint, EP, album. We shot a video, shit like that. So Parker, if you, if I'm a credit anybody for putting me back into going to the studio, it's Parker Lee. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that, that, that's my dude. That's my dude. That nigga fuck with me from the darkness to the light. So the fire was back on when you started yeah, no putting doubt. the joints back up? No doubt. Because my last shit... <clears throat> My last record company records from Tough City, I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't have no, mm-hmm. I don't even play them shits. You know what I mean? It's like, you know when you was bullshit, you know, you didn't give it, you know, I didn't right. put all, because I didn't have the tools that niggas have, you know, to have a, I fucking go in the studio, do a record, you give it back to me, it's all mixed and mastered to sound like a fucking, like I'm in a hallway mm-hmm. or something. The shit, it don't sound like other people's records. Right, right, right. Something is wrong with this shit, mm-hmm. and I'm not. I'm not proud of it. So I'm not. You know what I mean? And so I never really gave none of that my all. When I came back with Parker, I was more do whatever the fuck I want to do. You know. So I got different themes and different shit I really wanted to get out with that. So the freedom that I had to just give me a beat, nigga, and, I, and this is what I'm gonna do to it. That happened with him. That started with him. So you still dropping joints to this day, right? Well, to this day, yeah. I mean, not like none of them shits blew up or nothing, but it gave people a awareness that Kaz is doing shit. Yeah. Every time I showed up somewhere, nigga, throw my joint or throw this joint, I'm like, oh, nigga, like, oh, shit. I always got something. Every time I come, nigga, if I'm DJing or if I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing, nigga, I'm blowing the spot up. I le- I'm leaving an impression every time I do something. Which you prefer? You prefer DJing or you prefer MCing? I, I prefer MCing, but but <clears throat> I I love DJing. It's my first love. I don't have the same. I'm a better MC than I am a DJ. All right. All right. To be honest, and uh, you know, I don't know why you getting so much out of me. This is gonna cost you. Cause you dope. Cause you dope. This is gonna cost you. Dope. You dope. Ah, uh, that's why. You just I, said you wanted to get a game, you wanted to pass the game down. So this what you doing? You passing yeah, it yeah, down. But yeah, 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 some yeah. of it. Some of it. <laughs> some of it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I'm looking at you on the chrome, man. You on the chrome. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Right. You shining, play. You shining. Man, yeah, but yes, I, sir. Yeah, as a as an artist, you know, if I had to put one thing in front of the other, I, I'm a better um, MC, a performer, lyricist. You know what I mean? I can I can write for you. I can write for like anybody in this room. Maybe not well, Razzcast is a different <laughs> animal, but <clears throat> if I tried, I would take what I know about him right. and his style and the way he do things and I would write that way. Right. Maybe not up to his caliber, but right. it would be of the style of a Razzcast. So if you heard me do it, you'd be like, nigga, that's Razzcast right there. Right. Yeah. You know? So you're able to be a chameleon, basically. I'm able to, yeah, to morph into the people around me, and you know what I mean, and, and give to them or take from them. Right. Well, that, that, that comes from the lost art of, of creativity. The, some people feel the less they have to do, the better. And it's like with the group mentality, if you got a group and it's four people and we all stand on that stage together, we all got something to bring to the table, then that should be equal. But usually in a group dynamic, 
you got one person that's dedicated to everything that goes on that's gonna go on on that stage. So he's the one that's at home writing, all right? When it's practice and niggas wanna smoke, get high, talk to bitches and do other shit, he's the one that's tightening up the motherfucking game and the routines. When it's time to make records, and niggas like, oh, this and that, this and that, such and such, and you got to, all right, I got you, I got you, this and that. That's the dude. So, at the end of the day, when all the motherfucking kudos come in, they go to that dude. Because that was the dude that was behind everything. That's the nigga who put in work. Instead of everybody putting in an equal amount of work, it, it never usually pans out that way. So that's why there's always a standout in the group, because that's the nigga who put in most of the work. Yes, sir. You know what I mean, it, rarely there's a guy behind the scene that, you know, like a five heartbeat type shit, like, you know, like, and he, he writes everything, he does everything, but there's another front man. I mean, usually everybody that's in that, um, that, uh, what you call it, the trinity mm. of first dope MCs, myself, Kumo D, and Melly Mel, were, were the heads of groups. You know what I mean? We the ones who put in the extra work. We put in the extra time. We, the extra mind, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, that's who shines at the end of the day. And it's only right. Okay. It's only right. Like I said, if you ever was dope, you should always be dope. There's no excuse. If you can't get up here and do what I do, then you're not me. You're not me.